beard back again to talk more about the shoulder, specifically when there's an asymmetry surrounding reconditioning or rehabilitation of the shoulder. Whether it's just a corrective exercise program to help improve an imbalance or coming back from a rehabilitation protocol that will require physical therapy or an athletic trainer's intervention. Usually, the side of the body that's injured takes the lion's share of the attention, as well it should during early stages of rehabilitation and reconditioning. But as we get back into integrated movement patterns, we must make sure that the opposite quadrant, as well as the rest of the kinetic chain, are balanced out. It's a big part of the integrated exercises, making sure our nervous system is re-educated on how we can move again. It's not that we can't move there, it's that we have to learn how to again. This might seem evident during rows, as if you're performing a pulling motion, and the side that you've been trying to improve consistent, consistently might look like it's elevating towards the end range of a row. Now, if you've gone through the specific protocols on soft tissue work and stretching and activation and thoracic mobility, in theory, that should be balanced off when you're looking at the two scapula, thoracic joints and the glenohumeral joints working through a pull. But sometimes you might see a little difference between the two sides. And here's something that might be happening here. When we think about Yanda's concept of upper cross syndrome, we always think about sagittal plane deviations front to back. We of course know that there can be frontal plane deviations, maybe a functional scoliosis, but there's also this, you can call it transverse plane, or oblique set of deviations that happen. So if someone's carrying a low shoulder and there's a frontal plane compensation here and then rotating like this, if we just focus on this quadrant without resetting the thoracic spine and the pelvis below it, we're not gonna get the same mechanics. So you might have to go back in and do some soft tissue work, not necessarily some activation patterns, but some soft tissue work to release any tension because the muscles around our spine are gonna go ahead and create tension intersegmentally through the vertebrae. So this is just kind of a, a gross example of that of what we might see at the thoracal lumbar fascia between the lat and the transverse abdominis putting tension through this band of fascia. But you're going to have some of those same sequences through the thoracic spine as well. So if the musculature on the right upper quadrant due to an injury is not stabilizing the thoracic spine, you might have the muscles from that left quadrant, even this whole sling down through the trunk working through that. So what does this mean for you? I'm going to give you an example of a rowing motion and we'll say that the right side is an injured side, and we'll look at the difference between the two sides. And it might not be that the right side, the injured side, isn't moving properly, it might be the left side has now started to change its quality of movement. Now, is my right side elevating, or is it my left side? Is my right side elevating, or is it my left side that's staying depressed and downwardly rotated? I'm not exactly sure how that looked on camera. I've got an idea for how it felt. But with your clients, you can even just use this during basic cueing, during integration or pulling exercises to make sure that that non-injured side is working correctly. It's not always about reteaching just the right side. We have to reteach the left side, especially, especially if this has been an extended or a chronic problem. I'm Eric Beard. Thanks for watching and have a great day.